Hello and welcome to another Telltale Books video review. This time, since Emily and I were reading through the entire Space Odyssey series by Arthur C. Clarke, we've left off with 2061, and she's promised to read 3001, uh, the final Odyssey, um, sometime soon, I hope, but she has been very, very busy, which is why I'm doing these by myself. Uh, so I wanted to read some more short stories and start kind of like a short story Tuesday every week because I love short stories. And, and there are a lot of short stories in the science fiction genre that are the foundations of our genre. Uh, the stuff you were, the, the stories you read today really were built on the works of authors like Asimov and Heinlein and Bradbury and, um, others like late other later authors like like Philip Dick and and Harlan Ellison and and Theodore Sturgeon and and all of those authors wrote a lot of short stories especially early in their career. Um, there were reasons for that not not really entirely choice the market mostly magazines was. Um, it was easier to, to crank out a lot of short stories to make money than to try to sell novels to, to the magazines. And that only changed in the 1950s when book publishers started publishing novels of science fiction. They, you know, because of the UFO craze and um, authors like Werner von Braun writing about the coming space age there were a lot of people excited about space and aliens and and science fiction themes and and so people wanted science fiction books so the publishers were looking for novels but anyway when these authors got started they started with short stories and one of the greatest short stories in the genre is the primary story, according to most people, though Arthur Clarke himself said it wasn't really so, but most people feel that the, the primary story behind 2001 A Space Odyssey was the Sentinel. I have it in this. It's a Barnes & Noble reprint of the old Byron Priest collection from the 1980s. And uh, I have it in, in a number of other books, a number of other anthologies. It's one of the most anthologized stories in science fiction, I think, because it is one of the most famous science fiction stories. And, uh, and rightly so. It is, it is an excellent story. And, and this particular book actually has illustrations. Let me see if I can dig up the illustration for the Sentinel. It's a very nice book. You know, it's not a highly collectible book, especially not the edition I have. It's just the Barnes & Noble reprint. It's not the original. 135. Here we go. There's the illustration that was done for the shine for the, the shining the sentinel. Pretty nice. The illustrator doesn't say in the cover. But it's a very nice book. Anyway, the Sentinel. It is at least it's the, the first of the stories that 2001 drew upon. Arthur Clark himself states that 2001 drew upon a number of his stories and it really did if you read his novel earthlight which was published i believe in 1953 or 54 something like that so after the sentinel because the sentinel was 1951 and it was originally titled the sentinel of eternity and uh i believe it was published in planet stories <laughs> Planet stories are startling, or one of those really garish. No, 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 no. That's right. It was published in 10 Story Fantasy. That's the title of the magazine. Um, edited by Donald A. Wolheim, who became very famous as the founder of Daw Books. But, well, it has a, a really bad kind of sadomasochistic cover. 
<laughs> which which has nothing to do with the Arthur C. Clarke story. That's what you find with a lot of those pulp magazines, especially in the late 1940s, early 1950s. You had authors like Clark and, and Philip K. Dick, Theodore Sturgeon, and they were selling these really, really wonderful stories to these magazines that had these horrible pin-up covers. <laughs> Um, I kind of like those old covers, but, you know, it didn't do justice to the kind of fiction that was inside that magazine. It was really much better than what the cover was suggesting. Anyway, we're here to talk about the Sentinel. And the Sentinel is a, it's a very short story, 10 pages in, in this collection, and it's about um, some Earthmen astronauts. They're on the moon. They're in a moon rover driving out, exploring an, a particular crater. I forget which one it is. And one of the guys inside the rover, he's using this kind of binocular sort of thing. And he's looking at the top of a mountain and he sees a glint on the top of the mountain. So he says, I'm going to climb that mountain and find out what that is because it looks artificial. So he and, and the other astronauts, they do climb up to the top of the mountain where there's this plateau and they find this object surrounded by this force field. Definitely not man-made. Definitely not anything Earthmen put there um, far beyond the capabilities of man. But obviously not something native to the moon either. It came from somewhere else. Somebody came from somewhere else and dropped this thing on the moon for some purpose. And the rest of the story is kind of speculation about just what that could be. And that's really all the story is. But the genius of the story is that sense of wonder of the speculation. You know, Clark gives you just enough information to set your mind running and then stops and lets you fill in the rest. And it gets you going down this road of speculation where you're, you're just wondering about all these possibilities of alien civilizations and, and um, you know, aliens that are like gods that maybe are watching over the earth and, and waiting for us for some reason, maybe to destroy us, maybe to see if we're any kind of a danger, maybe to try and help us, who knows? None of that is answered. It's all left to your imagination. And it sets your imagination wild. Quintessential science fiction story. It's what science fiction is really all about. You know, um, there's a lot of a lot of what's being written today that is really just science fantasy. It's not it's not properly science fiction because it's not about how scientific situations will change us and affect us. And that's really what science fiction is all about. I've got another story on my schedule to do a video review of Trends by Isaac Asimov, which is kind of, this, it's, it lacks the big idea, sense of wonder of, of Arthur Clarke, but it still goes down that road of creating a literature which speculates about scientific situations and how progress may affect us and change us and how we would react to it. And that really is where science fiction is. It's, I mean, I think you, you really have to define science fiction in a lot of different ways, but the core science fiction is that type of story that starts with some kind of scientific situation and analyze and throws it into the midst of a bunch of people and analyzes how they react in kind of a thought experiment experiment so science fiction is really about our psychology and how we're handling all this stuff and was brought about by the fact that the industrial revolution did change everybody did affect everybody's lives in some ways for good in some ways for bad 
And different people reacted to that situation in different ways. There were a lot of different things happened in reaction to technological progress. And, you know, science fiction came along and saw that that's what was happening. And they said, well, scientific progress isn't going to end. What if this happens? How are we going to handle it? What if we discover an alien artifact on the moon? What does that mean for us? How is it going to affect us? How are people going to react to that? That's the core of science fiction. And that's what this, this story doesn't go so far as to analyze how people react after the fact, but it does, it does just pose that, hey, alien artifact on the moon, and lets you, the reader, take it the rest of the way. Brilliant story. Great story. One of the greatest in the genre. Um, you can sit there and, and, you know, from a Brandon Sanderson soapbox and say how it, there's no world building, there's no magic system, there's no, you know, the, there's no real characterization. Well, it's a 10 page story. What do you want in character? Um, but this isn't that. This is a totally different type of literature from anything else you, you read in any other genre. That's what made science fiction so important is it's, it's a totally new literature that never could have been written before the Industrial Revolution because we had no clue. Now, you know, after the Industrial Revolution, we had a clue as to how science and technology can affect us and we can th speculate about well what if we somebody does develop a faster than light drive how does that change us how does that change our society how does that change all of our futures what if somebody built a generation starship how are people going to live on that starship how are they going to change over the generations before they reach the star these are sci scientific and technological situations that could come about and that then writers take and speculate just what if and speculate how we react to it and produce some really great works of literature, whether whether they have the things that that you are looking for in a book or not. This is great stuff. It's brilliant stuff. It's important stuff. It's it's a it's not like any other literature ever written before or since. And The Sentinel is one of those cornerstone foundational stories that define that new literature, new old literature. It's been around for quite a while now. So um, don't know if you would like, I enjoyed reading it. Uh, it's mostly descriptions of the surface of the moon and for the most part, you know, this was before anybody walked on the moon or took pictures on the moon. For the most part, Clark got it right. Um, he does speculate about there having been life on the moon in the past and there still being some surviving fossils of plants but and water. But... Um, you know, we didn't know back then. We, 1951. The story was actually written in 1948. We didn't know. So he kind of used his imagination for his story. And he, he writes a description of, of, a real, of, what is, of what we know to be a very barren and forbidding landscape. But he makes it beautiful in the way he talks about it. In a way that only Arthur C. Clarke can do. And yeah, there's characters in the story, but they're not at all important. They don't matter. They're just there to discover an artifact and get us to the beauty of this idea. So this story did ultimately launch a lot of other ideas in Arthur Clarke's later stories. I mean, there's, there's echoes of... Rendezvous with Rama in this story. There's echoes of Earthlight in this story. And of course, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Those things developed from this basic idea in 1951. 
Great story. I recommend it. It's definitely one of our top tales already on the list on the website. So visit our website, visit us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, like and subscribe. Come back and see more of our videos. I've got a lot more coming up. Uh, mostly of major, major works like this. I've got a, a bunch of really big, important science fiction, fantasy, and horror stories on my list. I'm going to be doing videos of them in the next two months. So come back and watch them. Leave comments. Tell, you know, I, I don't want to, I can't emphasize this enough. I want to know what you think. I'm here talking about my ideas and my experiences and what I like. I want to hear what you think. Do you think I'm full of crap? Do you agree with me? Do you, did you read the Sentinel and like it? Did you read the Sentinel and hate it? Leave your comments. Um, make a conversation out of this, not just a one-sided thing. But definitely come back and see us some more. That's all I got for, t for this video. Till the next one. Have, have a good read.